ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد ايها الناس فان اصدق الكلام كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون O you who have attained faith be Allah conscious have reverent awe in your hearts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is worthy of who he is worthy of his glory and majesty worthy of his names and attributes worthy of his bounties worthy of who he is and make sure we do not die except in a state of islam make sure we do not die except in a state of islam in a state of loving surrender voluntary loving surrender mentally and emotionally in words and in deeds in actions and in reactions all in loving surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my dear brothers and sisters i remind myself and you always and again that we are created for the purpose of being ibad of allah azza wa jal loving servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this short span of life no matter what our occupations are no matter what our conditions are at the individual level and at the collective level in that context we are to be ibad of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do that we need to constantly monitor the state of our tawhid of allah azza wa jal of our active affirmation of the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives we monitor that we watch our vital signs like we usually and customarily and periodically go see doctors and have a general check up and check the vital signs and make sure the vital signs are well most essentially of our vital signs is our active affirmation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only intellectually but emotionally and experientially always aware of the attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what they mean and how they reflect themselves in this world in this existence and upon me always monitor that and think about that and check how i am in relation to every attribute every name of his subhanahu wa ta'ala that's part of monitoring the vital sign of my tawhid of allah azza wa jal whether in prosperity or in adversity whether alone or in public under all conditions no matter what i do no matter where i am individually or at the collective level and consequently of that awareness of the tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and observing in my life the expressions of his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala to monitor my akhlaq to monitor my character and therefore my deeds and actions and words and reactions in all aspects of life I monitor my akhlaq and to strive to make sure that my akhlaq regardless of what I do or not do that my akhlaq are to the best of my striving ability at the time depending on the level of my maturity I make sure that my akhlaq are as much as possible in line and in harmony with the akhlaq of the most beautiful representation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in existence the akhlaq, the sifat of the nubuwa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam I do not forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I do not forget the way I live as it relates to that relationship and therefore and for example as I am in that consciousness and I should strive to be that way examples abound in the Quran and in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa to help us navigate through this spiritual reality as I mentioned of Tawheed and of Akhlaqi requirement Allah Azza wa Jal as he tells us about the story of the children of Adam Habil and Qabil and there was a challenge they live life they are muwahidun and they live life and they have challenges and in one of those challenges as all of you should know one is angry at the other they have a conflict there is a conflict of interest of some sort socially and even spiritually but look what one of them responded to the threats of the other لَإِنْ بَصَدْتَ إِلَيَّ يَدَكَ لِتَقْتُلَنِي مَا أَنَا بِبَاسِطٍ يَدِيَ إِلَيْكَ لِأَقْتُلَكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ If you extend your might or your hand to me to kill me I shall not extend my hand or my might to you to kill you I fear Allah Lord of the world or when another mundane case when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in a mundane if you will event when he and our beloved mother of the believers alayha ridwanullahi wa sallamuhu Aishatu as-siddiqa radiyallahu ta'ala anha wa arwaha he was walking with her and somebody approached them and said on the way assalamu alaykum of course, most would say here, Wa alaykum as salam. She answered, Wa alaykum as salam wa ghadabullah. Sayyidah Aisha answered instead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quickly and said, May up be upon you the salam and the anger of Allah azza wa jal. Because she understood that the person who said, As salam alaykum, which sounded like as salam alaykum, he meant as salam alaykum, which is a word to mean also death be upon you. So she answered, Wa alaykum as salam wa ghadabullahi wa la'anatuh, or kama qalat, radiallahu ta'ala anha. The point is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that incident, looks at her and says, Ya Aisha, O oh Aisha, Iyaki wal unf, wa alayki bil rifq. Ma kana al rifq fi shayin illa zana, wa ma kana al unf fi shayin illa shana. O oh, Aisha, don't do that. Beware of violent behavior and be one who is kind and gentle. For whenever gentleness is introduced in anything, it makes it more beautiful. When gentleness and kindness in action or in reaction is introduced in anything, it makes that thing and that situation or that 
challenge beautiful, more beautiful. And whenever the opposite is introduced in anything, al violence, in anything at any level, it vilifies it. It makes it vile and ugly. A reaction in the context of an awareness of Allah Azza wa Listen further and then I'll come to summarize that in another, in one attribute of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he, <coughs> uh, when a righteous man of our predecessors and ancestors of our salaf, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ardahum, when he was exposed to abuse by someone verbally abusing him, and there were people who were witnessing, and he wouldn't utter a word in response in public. And that was a scholar and a, a wali min awliya'illah, a righteous person. Then when the person left, they told him, why didn't you answer him back? Now listen to his answer, his personal answer, in his personal level, in the way he personally reflects the tawheed and the awareness of Allah Azza and the akhlaq of the nubuwa and the character of prophethood. He answers, rahimahullah ta'ala, لم أعرف مساوئة فكرهت أن أفتري عليه He says, actually, I'm sorry, I, I don't know any of his um, ailments of character. I don't know anything, I don't know the person, I don't know his character, I don't know the negative aspects of his character, so I had nothing to say. And I disliked to lie against him. Allahu Akbar. Another one in the same situation answered, this time he answered the person who abused him, and he said to him, لَوْلَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى لَأَجَبْتُكْ Allahu Akbar. He says, were it not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees, I would have answered you. Allahu Akbar. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said to us, to his companions, he said, أَيَعْجِزُ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَكُونَ مِثْلَ أَبِي ضَمْضَمْ قَالُوا وَمَنْ أَبُو ضَمْضَمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ كَانَ رَجُلًا إِذَا أَصْبَحَ يَقُولُ اللَّهُمْ إِنِّي وَهَبْتُ نَفْسِي وَعِرْضِي لَكْ فَلَا يَشْتُمُ مَنْ شَتَمَهُ وَلَا يَظْلِمُ مَنْ ظَلَمَهُ وَلَا يَضْرِبُ مَنْ ضَرَبَهُ End of quote, in this hadith, with this metan, there are other variations of this same hadith, in which he said, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم, is it impossible for you? Is it too much to ask of you? He said to them, in other words, to be like Abu Dhambam. They said, who is Abu Dhambam, Ya Rasulullah? He answered, Abu Dhambam was a man, every morning he wakes, he says the following, addressing Allah Azza wa Jal. Oh Allah, I have given for your sake to you my life and my honor. And therefore, he will not abuse anyone who abuses him. He will not abuse back anyone who abuses him. He will not transgress against anyone who transgresses against him. And he will not beat anyone who beat him. End of quote. What is this? This is, if we contemplate it, a manifestation of servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are so aware of the attributes of Allah azza wa jal, in this case, the attribute al-kafi. Al-kafi. 
Al-Kafi, the sufficer. The one who suffices, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Kafi. Why did they react that way in this extremely powerful, morally incapacitating, morally incapacitating. How could they do that? Because in their hearts there is living attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Istihwaru wa shuhudu sifati Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala biqulubihim fi jami' ahwalihim. Because in their hearts, in their minds, they are so aware and so contemplative of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they manifest themselves in their own lives and in the lives around them. They see the ultimate, the ultimate controller through his attributes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when they did that, فَإِنَّهُمْ لَجَأُوا إِلَىٰ رُكْنٍ مَتِينٍ When they responded the way they responded, they did by finding refuge and rescue in an invincible refuge, untouchable refuge, Al-Kafi. Al-Kafi. When we are not in that condition, when we are not aware of this attribute, in our lives. And we, when we do not commit ourselves and نتخلق أيضا بهذا الاسم بخصوصيات هذا الاسم when we do not commit ourselves to adorn ourselves with this attribute or the consequences of this attribute in our lives then what will happen in our lives when we not, we're not aware of Al-Kafi, he, the sufficer. When he's not in our hearts, when we're not aware of that attribute, when we have not internalized it, or when, when we don't care to do that, the result is Al-Israf versus Al-Qasd. The result is Al-Sharah. Al-Israf, that is uh, to be spendthrift, to be excessive in general, versus al qasd, versus to be moderate. The consequence of that is al shara versus al qanaa. Never to have enough shara, shara, once more and more and more at any level, eating or wealth or power or shara, more, 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 versus. Al-Qana'a, contentment. If there is that internalization of the ism al-Kafi, we are of the first, of the second category, not of the first one. When we don't internalize that, the consequence of that is al-Qalaq and al-Khawf in our lives. There is no Kafi because we rely on ourselves and our resources and our abilities and things around us. And it leads to Qalaq, restlessness. Will it work? Will it not work? I'm afraid it doesn't work. I'm waiting for the results. Like when you vote and you're waiting, did you win or not? Qalaq. Versus, and Qalaq, and, and khawf, and fear, and insecurity. Versus, Tuma'neena. Tranquility, and quietude. And versus uh, a man, security, instead of khawf and safety. The difference between internalizing this name in our lives and being aware of it and not. In the first case, it leads to our reactions in life to be of ibarar and ifsad. When we don't have that relationship with al kafi the consequence of what we said from Israf and Sharah and Qalaq and Khawf, that leads to Al-Ibraru bin Nafsi wa bil Ghair. 
والإفساد للنفس أو على النفس وعلى الغير. And that leads us to be hurtful and injurious and destructive to self and to society. And it leads us to consequently shaqa, misery in this life. Versus the opposite leads us to, as we said, after tranquility and quietude, it leads us to nafa and islah and to be constructive and helpful and useful and positive to self and to society. And consequently, a saada and not a shaqa. And consequently, happiness in this dunya before akhirah versus shaqa and shaqawa and misery in this dunya, in this world before al akhirah Al-Kafi, the sufficer. When we don't have that, nothing suffices. In any pursuit, in any even legitimate pursuit of business, of trade, of power, of social concerns, political concerns, of any sort of pursuit that we seek, when that name is not there in our qulub and in our lives, then... It turns against us. There is no end. For example, those of us who don't internalize that name, the world who does not internalize that name, we lead to a situation and a condition in society because it's in the heart of never having enough. And when we feel never, we don't have enough, and that enough, the limit of it, keeps growing and growing and becoming more and more, guess what will happen? That's how the environment is wasted. That's how we abuse the environment. The resources, the resources, we want more and more and more, and it's never enough. And it's not only enough at a small level, at a medium level, bigger and bigger and bigger, and therefore drawing more and drawing more and drawing more of the resources of the environment and of earth, even physically. Why? Because there is no kithaya. It's never enough. Why is it never enough? Because we have never internalized the name, the one who is enough, the sufficer. And we're stripped of that. And then you may even start a business, and you start a business, and then if there is no al kafi even legitimately, there is no limit of more and more and more. And the more you want, you forget that there will be more responsibilities. And you will have less time to use and enjoy what you have. You spend more time making sure you still have it to be protected and to be preserved. And you will rarely use it. Spend most of the time protecting it and preserving it. And with the insecurities it comes with. And with the taxes it comes with at all levels of the concept of tax. And then, one will have a lot more to answer for in this world and in the hereafter. A lot more to answer for. There are consequences. Because, لم أكتفي لم أكتفي ولما لم أكتفي لأنني سلب مني صفة الكفاية التي لا يمدها إلا الله الكافي سبحانه وتعالى رسولنا مولانا صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم as he teaches us that this كفاية from الله عز وجل الكافي على مستوى الجلب والدفع that is at the levels of drawing in what is good for us at all levels and warding off and repelling that which is hurtful and destructive 
painful to us at all levels. The kafi, the dafi', the jalib, the mumid is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if as we pursue the worldly legitimate means, we do not internalize this attributes and the all other, other attributes, in this case, our lives are miserable. Agitated always. Afraid always. Insecure always. No matter whether we have or we don't have. Because we, when we have, we are afraid to lose what we have. When we don't have, we're afraid, we're afraid not to survive with the least we have. We're afraid. It's never enough. So he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, من جعل الهموم هم واحدا هم المعاد كفاه الله ها هو الكافي كفاه الله سائر همومه I repeat he said صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم من جعل الهموم هم واحدا هم المعاد كفاه الله سائر همومه whosoever said he صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم makes the concern the worry one worry only the worry of the ultimate encounter with Allah عز وجل see استحضار معاني صفات الله سبحانه وتعالى منها وإليه ترجعون منها الجامع الحاشر سبحانه وتعالى he who she who makes their worry their concern their focus their objective the ultimate moment of encounter with Allah عز وجل has كفاه الله now الاسم الكافي his name الكافي the verb كفا كفاه الله Allah will suffice him or her, or them, for all their concerns. That is, the concerns and the worries of this world and of the hereafter. وَمَنْ تَشَعَّبَتْ بِهِ الْهُمُومُ فِي أُمُورِ الدُّنْيَا لَمْ يُبَالِ اللَّهُ فِي أَيِّ أَوْدِيَتِهَا هَلَكَ And as to the one, who allows his worries and concerns to be spread out and scattered and shattered into all the concerns of this world, Allah will not mind in which of those valleys, of those concerns, that person is lost. He doesn't mind in which of those that person is lost and is destroyed and perishes. The righteous salihun of our predecessors used to advise one another as one of them said on the basis of these teachings those who see this life the way it should be seen very, in a very balanced way they would still always enjoin upon one another saying مَنْ عَمِلَ لِلْآخِرَةِ مَنْ عَمِلَ لِآخِرَتِهِ كفاه الله أمر الدنيا وآخرته ومن أصلح ما بينه وبين الله أصلح الله ما بينه وبين الناس This is the way they admonish one another in their lives and they lived life with all its complexities and challenges They would advise one another saying to one another the one who works for the hereafter, for his hereafter or her hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice them for all matters of this world and of the next. And the one who rectifies the relationship, rectifies and mends the relationship between him or her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will rectify his or her relationship with the creatures, with people. 
اللهم اكفنا بك عما سواك والله be the sufficer for us outside anything and anyone else أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه طوبة للمستغفرين الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله على عباده الذين اصطفى اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق معلن الحق بالحق الفاتح الحق بالحق ناصر الحق بالحق دامغ جيشات الأباضيل وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم My dear sisters and brothers I leave you with this that I said to you and to myself and with this last dua and never never belittle dua never belittle dua prayers for dua sometimes is like medicine a medicine particular medicine works for some people but it doesn't work for others so the doctor gives them another medication of another brand and it works for them dua is like that there are so many ad'iyah and those ad'iyah are medicine sometimes you use a dua or a dhikr and you think it didn't work don't think that way ever maybe it didn't work for you because that's not the right dua for you therefore never stop looking for the dua and using all dua for one day by the grace of Allah if Allah knows we deserve it and by his bounty and grace the right dua will be taught and the right dua will be said oh it works medicine works that way and medicine is a creation of Allah is a sabab and dua is a sabab also by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't think that the material sabab is more important than the spiritual sabab that's one indicator that we are not internalizing al-kafi inside of us properly beware doctors and patients beware doctors are a means of al-kafi their medicine you use is a means of al-kafi you take it but you don't believe in it you don't worship it you don't ascribe the result to it it belongs to whom to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa iyyak wa iyyak wa iyyak ya ayyuha al-mu'min and allah azza wa jal knows better so he said sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam man qala kull sabah kull yawm fi man qala kull yawm fi as-sabah wal masa hin yusbih aw hin yumsi la ilaha illa allah la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika la la ilaha illa allah No, he said, who said, Hasbi Allah, La ilaha illa hu, Alayhi tawakkaltu, Wa huwa rabbul arsh al-azim. Seven times, Kafahu Allah, Ahammahu, Wa humumahu min al-dunya wal-akhira. Ya Rab, Whosoever repeats seven times, This dua, Hasbi Allah, my sufficer is Allah. La ilaha illa hu. There is no deity but he. Alayhi tawakkalt. Upon him truly I rely. Wa huwa rabbul arsh al-azim. And it is he, the Lord of the great throne. Seven times Allah will suffice morning and evening. 
Allah will suffice him of his worries of this world and of the hereafter. Allahumma ja'alna min al-ladhina istami'una al-qawla fayittabi'una ahsana. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdivina wa ja'alna ahdina mahdiyin wa ila dhalina wa la mudhillin wa ja'al khayla ayyamina wa as'adaha yawm malqaak. Allahumma ahbibna wa habibna. Allahumma la takinna ila anfusina wa la ila shay'in min wasailina aw khalqika طرفة عين وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله